Hello and welcome back to our Pyre playthrough where we have prevailed with Bay. You return to the wagon after prevailing or having prevailed against the accusers in the Liberation Rite. That's one less mouth to feed. Safe travels to you, Bay. She is a young vagabond girl with an odd manner and an unshakable sense of curiosity, and has regained her freedom in the Liberation Rite. The rest of us will await the day of our reunion on the other side. You succeeded in liberating Bay, who returned to Commonwealth in glory. We have but a few such liberation rights remaining, exactly how many I do not wish to speculate about, as yet, until such a time as we can better say for certain. Under no circumstances would I suggest this is ideal, however, it is an opportunity enough that our plan- wait. However, it is opportunity enough that our plan may, as yet, succeed, which is now at 67%, not bad. Although, all these setbacks, I fear- Wolfrey trails off and files silent. Some of the others exchange looks. They are beginning to understand. With the rites soon ending, everything which Wilfred has sought, both on his own for many years and now with all of you, all of it may have been in vain. The hush spreads to the others, but not to you. He then proceeds to do something that none of you, that none seem to expect from you. You raise your voice. Each of your fellow exiles turns to you, then their expressions asking you a question with no easy answer. What are we going to do? You meet Bertrude's gaze. The words for the occasion begin to crystalline, crystallize in your mind. Uh, you are searching for the right words. As all your fellow exiles are looking to you now. You tell them that you have all stood together time after time throughout this quest, now poised upon a glorious opportunity. You tell them that you are not going to mince words with anyone here because by now each of you knows each other well. You tell them that... Yeah, okay. You tell them that you all have struggled to come here uh, to come this far on the downside, though many challenges, through many challenges you have faced. Um, and our poison sees a glorious opportunity. Yes, we're not going to mince words. Then we pursue the trust with any guarantees. It is a quest you all knew will, was unlikely to end well. It's clear now that not all of you are going to return. Surely this was weighed heavily upon everyone. Your path of freedom still is laid bare before you all. True freedom is not waiting for you in the Commonwealth. Yes, no guarantees are given. And it was unlikely to end well. No, actually, no, that's like too on the nose. Or too, you know, accurate. Yes, this is the more, I guess, the one I wouldn't go to. But something far more vital is at stake. You see the imminent inclusion of the rights at the sign. It is a sign that the world is changing. <clears throat> Divine duty to uphold. Conduct, you have your sister forces that would crush you. Conclusion rights of the sign. It is a sign that the world is changing. You have this opportunity to live with purpose for your people, for all those who live on. Just and poised to ensure the world you leave behind for your loved ones, for your people, is a world worth living in. Oppose you for your people, for those who live opposed. Purpose. Loved ones. Fight the opposition. Mm hmm. Sure. If you cannot see merit in this quest, then you are unfit to stand upon the Nightwings. You are unfit to stand upon the Sacred Mountain. Okay, that's pretty good. The road you ended up to all of you, to each of you, is in your own way. If you can believe any of this, then believe above all in each other. Believe that the plan may yet be achieved. You are unworthy of the arrangements in the books. You are unfit to stand atop the Sacred Mountain. There you go. I just realized you can change both, not just one. After a brief period of reflection, you share one last sentiment with the group. Our cause is just and we shall not be stopped. And then you join the others. We are the righteous and we shall have our day. The stars may die, but our cause shall live on. Whoever dare supposes is welcome to try. Soon shall we stand together unopposed. And we shall not be stopped. Thus do you remain together with your thoughts. No one speaks for time, but then... You truly believe that your commonwealth can change its ways? Then, dear, uh, reader darling... I suppose that I may yet come to believe it too. Thou wouldst dare to change this ancient world reading one, and yet thy words are tinged with certain truths. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Tease a fast to stand with you no matter where your quest shall lead. May law and the stars remain a light for you, reader madam. All the while Wolford remains watching you intently. 
Then his expression softens and he smiles. You are right, you are right, of course, my girl. We are the Nightwings. It is precisely as you said. Our cause is just and we shall not be stopped. Let us then, reader, to the end of our quest. Uh, lead us then, reader, to the end of our quest and the, the dawn of the new age for all our kin. Everyone, for the Nightwings. Everyone responds in kind. Sweet. They stand with you no matter what. They await the outcome of your vision of the stars, which burn with renewed fury. Because now, the last rites beckon. Each of the Nightwings gain plus one hope permanently! Fuck yeah! We should not be stopped. Stars above now burn with what appears to a desperate fury. Many more of them than usual. Your path is to choose the myriad of stars. Bing! Bing! Bada bing, bada boom. Oh god, all the stars. Everything you could potentially want. The eight, the stars of the eight scribes, they shine together now, as one. The little minister draws breath of those surprised what he sees. He backs away and averts his eyes. This is another sign the rites are soon to cease. Few chances yet remain to confront the adversaries you have met during your journey. Wilfred's planner, yes. Uh, 67. Oh, wait, 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 we already saw that. Rage, rage, rage. The dissidents. The well, dissidents are doing pretty well. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Fight against people we have not fought against before, ideally. Two to zero, two to zero. Two to zero. Two and a one, we may do that then. Just, just to rub it in, just, yeah, fight Lendl again and make him feel like a shitlord. Two and zero. Two and zero. Is that it? One, two, wait. Just go through it again. Two and zero. Two and zero, one, two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, okay, that, that's it. Um, don't really care for them. Don't really care for them. We may fight with Tamitha or Lendl. I don't know which currently, but I kind of feel like rubbing into Lendl because he was such an asshole to Tizo that I have to, <laughs> basically. Plus, we gotta get that, you know, win rate uh, two over. Now we're uh, two to one, we gotta have it three to one, so now it's, you know, just a two bump across all things. I think you understand what I'm trying to say. And if not, you know what? I'm not the best communicator, so it happens, it happens. The stars reveal to you a path towards a pit of milking, where the rights shall soon continue. Come morning, your travel shall continue. For now, everyone needs to rest. And also needs to talk, and also needs to have the book read. <clears throat> oh, berries. After the liberation rite of Bay, you find a lone minstrel back in the wagon, looking as though no such thing has just occurred this night. Hold on, let me just clear my voice real quick. There we go, much better. You, s you think you see him tilt his head as you approach. Some words of congratulations are in order for this evening, I should think. Uh, some words of congratulations are in order for this evening, I think, dear reader. And so, congratulations on prevailing in the liberation rite. Surely Bay shall be most grateful, and her safe return unto your commonwealth ought to benefit the plan in which you all now play a part. As for your adversaries of the accusers, this must have been a bitter loss for them and Lendl, although they may they must have known their chances were far from certain. Thus shall we all await the next turn of the cycle of the rites. Celeste and I are to return to our respective duties for the time as now Scribe's Gate is sealed. I await when next we shall meet. One next who may let yet live up to this glory of Nightwings in the eyes of the Eight Scribes, which yet shine down for us. He trails off the nonce to you in his cordial manner and bids you a good rest of the evening. Book time. Boing! The accusers formed under the Galanthian. He's a big man. He values just as loyalty and steadfastness. Galanthian he says that the accusers take their name from one of his most accomplished legions from his former military days. All among them, in fact, serve the Master General at one time. They represent the stout stoutest hearted men and women of the Empire who hold true to Mur and Goliathing to the end. The golden colors of the arrangements are reminiscent of their old shining armor in its claim. Every ever shall they seek out those with the truest spirits and the strongest sense of purpose and replenish their ranks. Sure, dude. Ring! The fallen Empire of Shar was a 
was ruled according to an ancient bloodline, though thought to be infallible. Our society shall instead be those who earn that privilege. We the eight, we cannot bear the burden of determining your worth. It shall be determined by your peers and by you yourself. It shall provide a framing through the rights to put you to the test. Against yourselves, against your kin, against your adversaries. The downside cannot let us all go free, thus freedom to the worthy. The downside cannot let us all go free, thus freedom to the worthy. <laughs> as the worthy, your true calling then begins as you return to a society which longs to learn the wisdom you have gained along your path. The worthy shall lead. I think there was one more. Oh no, that was it. Weird. Okay, um... Sweet. Exit out of this, continue your journey. There is no time now to return to Moonlight Alcove as before. As the stars already urge you on, everybody, everyone is ready to make haste for the pit of Melty. A uh, Wolfred approaches you as you fly above this hidden lair at the Moonlight Alcove. He cannot help but wonder if you shall ever return there. Our dear Alcove, I have asked my agents to break down the place. It shall soon be gone. If it isn't already, we shall not be returning. We have not the time to do so anyway, and with Orlek back among the living now, and no longer fond of me, I dare not think what he would do with it. Unfortunately, hiding places are of little value once they're found. Once all this is over, those of us, those of us who do not manage to return, we shall have to find another place to live. To try to live, at least. Alright, let's hit the NOS. The... whatever the equivalent of NOS would be in this game. I swear to god, man, I always somehow manage to pick the point that's the furthest away from everything. A gloom hangs thick above the pits of Millithing and all around. You are brave to seek your adversaries here again, reader. Many in the downside believe it to be nothing other than a foul den. They take the tales of Yslak Astralborn to be mythology, embellished through the retelling of our time. And the Star Titan, Star Titan is sealed away by the scribe's molten Millithy. By the scribe molten Millithy. Goddamn, I'm starting to lose my reading ability already. It's up spawn despair and fear and doubt in lands such as our own. You have met the others, such as Witch Old Mild, who believe otherwise. Although whichever their beliefs, I know of none who would go near the place unless the stars demanded it. The show you're coming right against the accusers take place in complete secrecy, as always as always the rights have. I need to like take a break after this. Wash my eyes out or something, and north route through the flagging hands comes across a massive grave. Wolfred expresses an interest in taking this route to the Pinamilty. Something of value. Flagging hands. Uh if you wish to pursue your vocations. Oh. So vocation is gonna I'm gonna wanna get something valuable anyway, so we might as well go with Tizo just so maybe he's happy. Also. Because we do want money anyway, so it doesn't like really matter. You arrive again in the darkest corner of the flagging hands, already anticipating the sinking feeling that comes with the place. This time, Bertrude has something to say for it. We shall show you how to understand the less pleasant qualities of this locale. She reveals various salves and minor enchantments that help to counter the spirit draining effects of the region. Soon everyone is feeling better, if but for the assurances. Henceforth, you shall not suffer penalties to hope in this region. Oh, sweet. Anyone want to talk? No? Alright. Then we shall explore. Something about the darkest corner of Plague Bont gives Tizo a strong intru intuition to explore the area. Together you set out to take a look. Oh, we should have talked to Sandtrack. Fuck. Uh, the middle of route through Flagging Hands cuts straight through the Pit of An ugly little trail here is often used for schlepping bits of contraband across the downside. Tizo wishes to accompany you on your patrol. There seems to be nothing particular in this vicinity, but then Tizo raises his voice. Tizo seems to have found something he wants you to see. Object in question is lodged deep in the ground and bears a mark of the rites. You sense you may be able to secure its contents, but the mystic wards may not be easy to undo. Time to open it? Sure, dude. Focus all your mental facilities, faculties, on the mystic wards, sealing the box's contents. Soon you are left exhausted, but the box's lid unfastens. Inside it is a talisman, placed there perhaps by one of your predecessors in the rites for, from ages past. You have discovered a luminous idol. Covers all stamina. Okay. Well, not quite the gold I wanted, but fine. 
Should have gone with vocations, maybe, because that uh, drink is not something we particularly care about, to be 100% honest with you. Um. Oh yeah, because that, that, that's the next point. Never mind. Uh, conduct the Redskins Lundle. Let's do it. Halt, everyone. I beg your, you please forgive my rudeness here. The Black Wagon has shuddered to a stop and route to the pit of Milithy. There is some commotion as the Lone Minstrel motions for everyone to be still. Someone is there, along our path, ahead. He points into the distance. However, when you scan the horizon, everything is still. You see no sign of whoever the Lone Minstrel is, is referring to. Still, he indicates caution. Strange. I do not believe I was mistaken. A tense moment passes, then another. Then Lone Minstrel tenses up. Our guest, he is there. You look towards where he signals, and at last you see the cause of his concern. There is no mistaking who it is. Orlex stands there, near motionless, atop some forgotten rock jutting from the soiled ground a fair distance away. He stands directly on the path of your black wagon. Yet he shows no sign of acknowledging the wagon's presence. He appears only to be waiting for something, likely for you all. The lone minstrel gets your attention quietly. Reader, what do you sense? What do your senses tell you at this time? Orlex may, Orlex may have come with ill intent. What should you do? Press forward, turn back, hey, let me have rights to get to, or like may wish to stand in the way, but can be made to move. Uh, rights is forbidden. Or like this be avoided. Hail him, or like may be here to talk. If you reach out to him, perhaps you can communicate in peace. Sure. There has to be a way to reason with Orlek and bridge differences between him and his former triumvirate. Perhaps he has come to negotiate. Perhaps you are correct. Let us try and make contact with him then, as we proceed. You give the signal for the driver imps to start the wagon and head forward. But just as you reach the point where Orlek once stood, it seems our guests have already departed. Let us remain watchful as we proceed on course. Indeed, Orlek is nowhere to be found now. The unnerving encounter causes everyone to fall silent for the remainder of the trip. Okay. And apparently another one. Oh, no. Your wagon finally arrives at the Pillar Milty, where is still there is no sign of Orlek or your next adversaries for that matter. Your companions organize a quick search about their premises, leaving you to watch the wagon until the ride's commencement. It revealed the page reveal the pits of melody. Something's wrong. Someone is here alone with you. Oh, sweet, it's Orlik. Ooh, what is this? Ah, how do you? Oh, I did not know we had mushrooms growing in our thing as well. Did that new, or did we just get that recently? God damn it! I hope I haven't missed that. Given present circumstance, now it seems not the best time to be focusing on the Book of Rights. Fair enough, game. You know what? Fair enough. That was my B. Orlex seems to be examining various objects in the wagon. Whether he has noticed you, you cannot tell. What he is doing here, and how he got in unnoticed, you cannot imagine. You watch him go about whatever he's doing, examining all sorts of things that you and your fellow exiles gather on your journey. He shakes his head. All of these trinkets. All of these tri- I don't know, man. I don't know what the voice I want to do for him. Slash what I did for him. So let's just go with normal me speaking voice for now. This wagon, it is most different now. Welcoming, and yet... I am unwelcome here, it seems. In my own wagon. He directs his gaze at you, acknowledging your presence for the first time. You, a mere shadow. Tell me something. Who are you, then? To them. Reader! Uh, Truth, you're their friend? Sure, I'd say that. <laughs> I am no one, I am Arya! And who's Arya? Arya is no one. Uh, you cannot think of compelling reasons to. Okay, yeah, friend. You tell Orlek that you have traveled all across the downside with this group and counted them as your trusted friends. It is a different group now than in, in his day. A friend, is it? You are then, for the Nightwings do not always treat their friends with all due charity. Relay to them a message for me, Shadow. Tell them I shall have my knight. He strides right past you toward the door, but then he turns to you again once more. It shall have. I shall have my knight. Sure, dude. Then Orlek is gone. Beyond the valley lies the flagging hands, which could be called a swamp, if an entire sea could merely be a lake. Soon after our arrival, uh, arrival several of us fell into dark despair, such were the environs. I found it rather fascinating, though. It held aspects reminiscent of the southern bogs we dwelt in as a tad. We grew accustomed to the dampness of the air and grew to savor certain twigs and beetles. It can be said that the flagging hands are an acquired taste, recommendable only for those of our same bent, or perhaps the downside's native imps. The sea surrounding the environs, on three sides, appearing insurmountable at first. 
Let's see surrounded, not surrounding. Whoops. Is that not it? Okay. Uh, Pillar Melody, there, if there is one celestial landmark in which I would never again wish to tread unless, of course, the stars besiege me too, it has to be the pit. T'was dark in there beyond all reckoning. If not for Melody's sorcerer's lantern, all of us, we all would have been lost. What lies within the pit is not to be invoked. Although I have no doubt our go goodly underking shall be unable to prevent himself from boasting of how Melody sealed it there for an entire age. The thing yet lies there, on the edges of death. Though it can... Its connection to the stars, through its connection to the stars, gives the pit significance. Walk there with courage and a steady mind. Okay. We'll do. Oh, apparently we cannot look at companions, that's fine. So, were your companions as, uh, return as you exit the wagon? You explain what happened? However, none of them saw Orlek. Most concerning, reader. Though I am thankful you are well. Orlek, he always was a peaceful individual, and yet, his disposition is much different now. Perhaps we had best inspect the wagon for any signs of tampering in light of these events. You and the others conduct an exhaustive search in, in, uh, in and around the wagon for any signs of objects missing or tampered with, as well as signs of damage or foul play. The search yields nothing. No one finds a thing. Uh, it finds any sign that anything was moved or tampered with, even the drive imps seem calm. The incident leaves you questioning your own recollection of what happened. You try to clear your mind, for the right is soon to commence. And also, we're on here. Oh, hey guys, uh, say so Wait, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, hey guys, say what? What uh, whatever happened to that bay you brought in here sometimes? You know, the loopy one frizzled hair always handling all the merchandise? I liked her. <laughs> Sorry, Ron. Uh, Alright. Here you can have this berry. And this mushroom. Put this here, put this there. Let's see what else you got. Uh, next right, next right, next right, next right, next right. Any more? Uh, no more, like, what are they called? Permanent upgrades, that's the, that's the fucking word for it. Alright, sweet, I guess we shall. Uh, pleasure doing this to you guys, so, uh, commence the right. Once more, you return to the Pillar of and your companions stand ready beneath the still night sky, awaiting the commencement of the rites. You overhear some of their words to one another as you await the signals in the stars. Almost time to get to work? I'll make you just suppose. Surely this is an honor to be gained in this! There is an honor. Just then you observe a glint of starlight that begins to shine above, and your companions soon fall silent. I may have gone too ham on that, uh... On that voice. But, uh, you know. It's been a little while since I did them. Tattered Manhill, after your adversary's grasp the orb, the aura shall slowly shrink rather than vanish. Cool. I may start fucking with these once again at some point, but you know, not yet. Gotta restore my faith in my own self first. Ah, the infamous reader returns. Ah, oh, don't be so sad, dude. It's not my fault I always win. Remaining retinue of miscreants. You managed recently to rid yourself of yet another one. Your adversaries, the accusers. As with you, they must be very desperate for their freedom. They shall not make it any easier from here. Once more you saw my chance for me, Nightwind. I suppose that you have come to rub it in, is that it? That would be very much in keeping with your nature. Then just you try it. Like, not really, but also a little bit. <laughs> to be honest with you. But who shall besmirch the Nightwing's name? What a dick. Uh, I kinda wanna get Pam, like, up to level 5, but... Also, I wanna upgrade Tizo a bit. Maybe her. I mean, we got slow against slow, so maybe she'll be good for this. Yeah, let's go with... Let's go with Volfred. And then... Bertrude. Then... Tizo. Yeah. Tizo. It was fine. Predictably decided. Wow. Again. Get record. Ta -ta, Lendo. Uh. Oh no. Okay, that's fine. Uh, 
Oh god. Did we get him? No, we didn't get him. We did get him there though. Okay. And now we grab the orb and we go. Ooh, oh shit! I shifted too slow. Tizo? Tizo, my boy. Tizo! Tizo! Already does your adversary's flame begin to flicker. Hmm, blast come accusers, we cannot let them set us back again. I'm very mad. I'm a mad boy. That was part without being banished. Nah, you know what? I'm good. The actual dip. Shit. Oh. Get wrecked. Oh! Damn it! <laughs> I got wrecked. Oh! We wrecked each other. The reckoning is too real. Okay, let's throw one down there. Yep, nice. Well, oh shit, not quite. It was a little too low on the distance. Okay, drop that. Oh, damn it. Oh, we threw it basically right in our own thing. Ah, shit, that's fine. Okay, that's good. Now we make it bigger, and we banish him. And then we go boop, and then we go boop, and then we go... Oop, in! Damn it! He blinks way too far. Which was the upgrade I got, but... I suppose it's a little bit unintentional. Excuse me? Ooh, sweet. Alright, now we're more or less... What's the word for it? On the same footing. Cool. Cool. Ah, oh, I always shift too slowly. <laughs> okay, sweet. The night wind's pyre burns brighter for now. Dog, why do you even try to do this? It's not gonna work. Ah, oh, just always right on the edge. Okay, that was a little bit stupid. I'll be honest. I don't know why I did that. Yep, I just let them basically walk it in. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, drop it. Nice. Then we boop him. Then we do this. Then we slowly just walk it in. Like, it's not even a problem. The night wings now are closer to a achieving victory. Okay, I don't know why I decided that was going to be a smart idea. Don't, don't ask why. I really don't know why I keep forgetting Tizo implodes. As opposed to... Oh. Yes. Nice. And slowly slide it in. Mm, slowly slide it in. That's what I did to your mom last night. What? Get out of here. Nice. Yeah, not gonna happen. I know you keep wanting for that to be the, the outcome, but I'm sorry. Is complete. Last, that a decorated constable of the Commonwealth should end up having to consort with fools as these, in these accursed robes and miserable circumstances. The, those damn scribes certainly exist, for it is clear they have not no love for me, or anyone of decent birth or station. His bitter attitude towards Nightwings and the rights is such that it affects his every move. A shame, really. Our adversary would appear to be most flustered by his failure. <laughs> Bask now in the wisdom of the scribes. A flash of inspiration for next time. Did we get him to level 4? Can't really see. I guess not. Gertrude, though? Yep, level 4, sweet. The exiled Bertrude is committed to the path. This land so rife with eldritch knowledge on forbidden the Commonwealth, we learn the stuff of fear itself. Oh. Uh. Or blast arcs with a wider angle, banishing adversaries in a larger area. When Bertrude Pyre has less health than the adversaries, her adversaries deal 10 less damage to her pyre. That sounds good. And this is... 
more damage when she is higher up. Recovers all stamina. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, we can only get one more after this. So either they do less damage to us. By 10. Or we get a buff that's questionable in usefulness, but then also a nice buff for her. Which pronounce that enemy? She has comes off stamina. You know what? I think we're gonna go this route, then this route. Until the next round. If there even is to be another one. Or route, I guess. However you want to pronounce it. If there even is to be another one. Oh, look how I'm salty. I'm so salty that you keep winning. Mmm, nom 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 nom. Black of the Black Wagon, you find the lone minister examining your fellow exiles after they bested the accusers rather soundly. It is plain to you, none of them look well. A lone minister notices you there and turns to you. Reader, the fast returning of the cycle of the rights has put a strain on everyone. We have multiple cases of banishment sickness this time. It is unfortunate that you, your other companions, are available to conduct the company right because I fear that this group here requires rest. You bid Volfred a swift recovery, and he nods weakly in response. You exchange looks with Tizo, who seemed exhausted after the last rite. As for Bertrude, it is, not cl it is clear to you she wishes to be left alone right now. You leave the lone minstrel to look after them and turn your attention to the stars that remain shining in the dark outside. Okay. The stars they shine for you, revealing various paths forward. You gaze into the darkness of night. Seek, new, seek now your new destination. Okay. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Those annoying dudes, maybe Pam with his sister, dissidents, let's go with Pam's sister, yeah. Why not? Alright, oh, so weird to have another brush with Tamitha, perhaps she'll spare me yet another moment of your time. She's here because of me, and I am here for her. Tamitha tells you more of your next adversary, her own blood sister. Tamitha Thane, a harp of the Highwing Remnants, raised from birth to excel in outwitting and outmaneuvering her enemies. She seems driven by her hatred for the Commonwealth. After retreating to the mountain centuries ago, the harps refused to join the Commonwealth, and those old tensions boiled over into raids or skirmishes or all-out war. Light tacticians such as Tamitha gave the Highwing Remnants a swift and powerful military presence to the state, despite the harp's small numbers. She once hatched ambitious plans through over- Ah, uh, hatched because she's a harp, you get it? Uh, ambitious plans to overthrow the Commonwealth, reaching its defenses so her sisters could drain down untold destruction. On the darkest night of the year, she led a daring infiltration mission deep into their enemy's lands. It almost worked. However, she was betrayed by someone very close to her, someone branded a Commonwealth sympathizer, Pamitha. Tamitha was caught, clipped, and subsequently exiled as a prisoner of war. But being trapped with the downside only stoked her fury. I wound up here, in here, not too long afterwards. Anyway, it's complicated. What happened between us? What I did, I did for her own good, and all that of all our sisters. Though, I am beginning to doubt that Tamitha will ever see it that way. We'll see, I suppose. For But for now, I'd best try and catch what, what sleep I'm able to- Okay, hold on. Oh my god, I, I was building the world's biggest frog in my throat, so I had to clear that out before I just lost my voice mid-sentence. Uh, sleep, uh, uh, to sleep I'm able. Pleasant dreams then, darling. You bid a good night to Pamitha in turn. No time now to make flight preparations, though come morning the Black Wagon will press onward. Alright, yes, thank you for joining me for this episode of Pyre, and I'd love for, for you to come back next time. And the time after that, and some more times after that. And you know what, if you keep coming back, dude, I'm not gonna complain. But yeah, uh, as you may have already known, You've been the audience. I've been Obo Cephalon, and this has been Pyre. I, yeah, bye.